What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 54, and this is a pretty cool episode. I play some 2-5 on the strip during CES, so that was uh, early January. This February has been tough, started out on a pretty big downswing, had the worst session that I've ever had, and uh, I'm on pace to have the worst month that I've ever had. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit at the end, uh, but that's why I haven't really been putting out videos or editing much, I've just been focused on playing. What have you been up to, buddy? I'm working on my rap song. Who's your uh, Who's your favorite rapper, by the way? For sure, me. Yeah, I had a feeling uh, you might say that. Who's your least favorite rapper? Jay-Z. Why? Just listen to his song, man. Let's play it. All right. Shoot my dog, I'ma kill your cat. I mean, what kind of sick bastard goes around shooting dogs and killing cats, man? It's just ridiculous. You can't... How does he get away with this kind of stuff? I mean, I don't think that's anything... I don't... I think you're kind of misunderstanding, but... Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Saturday, January 13th. It's 4 a.m. I'm on a weird sleeping schedule. Just woke up from a nap. So, uh, CES is in town, and there's an extra 200,000 people in Vegas for that. Games are usually pretty good around this time. I'm gonna head out to Caesars, and if the game isn't good there, then I'm gonna check out somewhere else. By the time my name gets called, it's 5.30 in the morning, I get my chips, head into the game, and it looks great. It's just me, my buddy Jeff, and several rec players. In the very first hand of the session, I pick up pocket deuces in middle position, there's a button straddle, the player under the gun limps in, under the gun plus one, who's absolutely hammered, and is possibly my favorite person to play with ever, also limps. I call, the small and big blind call, then the button checks his option. We go six ways to the flop, it comes 6-3 deuce with two diamonds. We've got bottom set on a draw heavy board. It's gonna connect well with limpers ranges. The small blind checks, the big blind bets 15. Under the gun folds, under the gun plus one, raises to 75. There are several hands that beat me, but I feel confident that I'm ahead of the drunk raiser. I put in a re-raise to 200, hoping to get it in. It ends up folding through, but we take down a nice pot to start the night, slash morning. My mom hates it when I'm on the sleep schedule. Shortly after, we get 8-7 suited in the big blind, the cutoff limps, the button calls, and the small blind who's the drunk dude raises to 15. We'll just call him Bob from this point on to make it easier. I call Bob's bet for 10 more, the cutoff and the button also call, so the four of us see the flop, it comes jack 5-4 with two hearts, we got a flush draw and a gutter, Bob bets 25. I consider raising here, but I'm getting such a reasonable price, and against a player like him, I'd rather go for max value once I make a hand, rather than semi-bluff. I call, then the cutoff, min raises to 50. I don't know what the strategy behind this decision is. The button folds, Bob calls, I'm getting over 7 to 1, and also call. The turn is the 3 of clubs, Bob and I check, the cutoff bets 100. Both of us call, the river comes out, it's the ace of diamonds, we've officially bricked everything. Now Bob leads out for 200. I fold, and then to my surprise, the cutoff folds also, Bob wins it. Now we're down slightly, but we pick up pocket nines in middle position. Bob limps from under the gun. I raise to 20. The hijack calls, the big blind calls, and under the gun calls. The four of us see the flop. It comes 8 6 5 with two clubs. The big blind, who's short stacked, leads for 25. Then Bob raises to 50. Again, we're seeing a min raise. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know if these guys think we're playing limit or what. I call. The hijack folds. Now the big blind shoves for 141 total. Bob tanks and then calls. I call as well. The turn is the deuce of spades. Bob checks. I'm interested in creating a side pot because I'm confident that I'm ahead. I bet 200. Drunk dude folds, so I take my money back from the bet. It's just me and the player who's all in. The river is another six. The big blind turns over 8-7 offsuit. He had a pair with an open ender when we got it in. Luckily he bricked. We win a decent sized pot. Interesting game here. Probably the best game I've played in in a, in a long time. We've got a guy who's really, really drunk, doing all kinds of weird stuff. In that hand that I had pocket nines, Jeff saw his cards when he was folding. Apparently he had king ten of hearts, so he min-raised the flop with no pair, no draw. 
Um, and then I called and the big blind jammed and he called the jam. Uh, not sure what his plan was there, but um, so the strategy for this game, it's gonna be a little bit different than normal games. I'm gonna be playing a wider range and I'm definitely not gonna be bluffing at all because people are calling, and just doing all kinds of strange things uh, because they just apparently don't wanna fold. We'll see if the plan works out. So far, it's going pretty well. I'm up about 350. Once I get back to the table, I couldn't help myself. I had to get a video of Bob's stack. Anytime you ever see anyone with a stack that looks like this, you make sure that you take a seat immediately and you stay as long as you can. Cherish it. Gotta cherish it. We're five-handed now and we've got King-10 offsuit in a small blind. Under the gun limps in. Bob also limps from the button. I call. My buddy Jeff checks in the big blind. We go four ways to the flop, and it's king-10 deuce with two hearts. We have top two pair in a multi-way pot with one dude who loves putting chips in the middle. I check, Jeff bets 20. Under the gun folds, Bob calls. I raise to what I think is 100, but actually turns out to be 125. I misclicked again. Jeff lays down his hand. He said he had king-queen. Unfortunately, the button also folds, but we win it. For the last hand I play at Caesars, I pick up 10-3 offsuit in the big blind. I wasn't expecting this to be a big hand, so I didn't get a good shot on my whole cards, but I took the liberty of making an excellent drawing here for you guys. Sure, I could have taken picks of cards in my house, but I think this adds a nice, more personal touch for the video. The button limps in, the small blind stumbles in as well. I check, the flop comes 5-4 deuce with two spades. Bob bets 10. I call, and the button calls. This is when I start videoing. The dealer puts out the ace of clubs on the turn, so we've got the straight. Bob bets 25, I raise to 100. The button folds, Bob contemplates and then calls. I think he probably would have re-raised if he had the straight. The river is the nine of diamonds. Now Bob shoves for however much this is. Against a normal player, maybe I'd fold, but against this guy, I absolutely can't do that. I call thinking there's a good chance we're chopping. Nope. The opponent turns over ace nine of hearts. He flopped a gut shot, turned top pair, then river two pair with four to the straight and shoved for somewhere around three times the size of the pot. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. It did not pay off for him. We win a monster pot of around 2K. Takes a little while to put the chips into stacks, but I'm up over 1400 after only a short session. Bob leaves, we're down to four handed and the other players decide to call it a night. We color up and rack up as well. Session's over, that went about as well as possible. Played for maybe two hours or something, and uh, got that guy to ship it with top two pair when I had the straight. Um, I'm running about as good as, as I can over the last like three months, which is awesome. I don't know how long this is gonna last for. I've never had a, had a run this good in my entire life, so uh, really enjoying it. Um, it's about 6.30 in the morning, and the game broke here, so I'm gonna head out to Aria and uh, play some 2-5 there. This is the second session of the day. It's about 7 a.m. This will be the first time I played at Aria in around a year. Um, when I first moved out to Vegas, something about these uh, rooms on the strip, these poker rooms on the strip, like Bellagio and Aria and even Venetian, I just felt intimidated when I walked in, made me a little bit nervous, gave me anxiety, and I just played worse. I thought everyone was making moves on me. I used to level myself a lot and punt off my stacks. So that's why when I first moved here, I, I played a lot at the Red Rock. I just felt a lot more comfortable there. Um, I'm not allowed to film here, so I'm probably gonna have to do hand recaps a little bit later. What's your name, man? John. John? 
Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, just hanging out. Just ended the session here. Uh, lost 110. Game wasn't that good. Uh, I'm a little bit tired, so I'm gonna head out. But I got into, I guess, only really one interesting hand, and uh, it was with John. So uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. I have ace queen offsuit under the gun and open to 15. Cutoff calls. Uh, new player. Didn't. He's definitely like a rec player. And then John calls on the button. Uh, and the big blind call as well, it was a short sack. Flop comes, ace eight seven, I believe it was rainbow. Yes, it was. Uh, I bet 25, cut off calls, uh, John calls, and the turn was a 10, 10 of diamonds. I think there were two diamonds out there now. Um, I check, when two people call, uh, a little concerned someone has me beat. I, I guess I could bet there, I was on the fence, um, but it's, it, co it coordinates well with the uh, with the seven eight. So I check, cut off checks. John checks it back. River is a jack. I don't beat too many hands now um, that would have called the flop because I think it's going to be a lot of draws, a lot of like uh, ten nine hands or something like that, or maybe even like ace jack or or something. So anyway, I check, cut off checks, and John bets one ten. One hundred five. One hundred five. Okay. So like I said. I don't really beat too much. Um, I can kind of just fold and live another day type of thing. Cut off folds. And John, what do you have? A nine. Basically, I uh, he played it right. Um, he had ace queen, I believe, right. Yeah. And the ten is a scary t uh, turn, so I would have done the same thing you did. I would have checked as well. Um, it gave me an open ender too. Yeah. So uh, you know the jack just made my straight. So you know again it was pretty standard. Yeah. yeah. And you, you played it right because the ten, you know. Could hit a lot of you know 10 8 uh, correct so uh you know pretty standard so, yeah yeah all right man well thanks a hey, lot thanks and uh take care good luck dude i'll keep uh watching on all right take thanks. care man see you around that's it for this episode guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did please hit the like and subscribe buttons definitely helps and uh, if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comment section and i'll get back to you a uh, few announcements to make first one is that andrew and i are doing a meetup game on february 28th at the westgate that'll be uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m., we're going to be playing some 2-5. Come hang out, have some drinks, and beat us in some bomb pots. Um, <clears throat> before that, actually, February 26th, that's my 30th birthday, and I want to spend it with you guys. I've got my brother and a few other friends flying in also. So we're going to Gold Spike at 9 p.m. I'll have a, uh, I'll have a address down below in the description box for that. Um, so that's going to be awesome. The last thing, I guess, is that... Uh, Andrew's up for a few American Poker Awards, which is really cool. So he's up for Best Vlogger. If he doesn't win that, you can uh, just never pay attention to the American Poker Awards again because he should be the he's the most deserving by far in that category, in my opinion. <clears throat> and then uh, he's also up for the People's Choice Award. So uh, I'll have a link down below in the description box. You can vote for him for the Personality of the Year and make sure that he wins that. Uh, I guess one more one more thing is I mentioned earlier that I'm on a downswing. I'm on uh, the worst cash game downswing of my career. Um, and uh, just as soon as February started, I started losing. Originally, I was not playing very well. I was playing pretty bad. And then I started running terribly, which is not a good combo. Um, so yeah, I was I was stuck, I think, 8,500 at the low point. I had a $5,500 losing session at uh, Bellagio. I've been trying to document the whole thing on Instagram, so uh, follow me on there because I haven't really been videoing any sessions. It's just a little bit too distracting uh, when I'm just, I'm trying to get uh, some money back. So I'm only stuck around 5,200 right now. Um, and this is all coming after the, the biggest upswing that I've ever had in my poker career. I, I won around like 37 or 38,000 over about 300 hours. So that's the best hourly by far over a stretch that long for me. Um, but it still sucks to go through downswings. And I'm gonna do a whole separate video on how to deal with, uh, with downswings, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. I'm definitely not the best example, but I think I have a lot of advice that's worth sharing. Hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.